Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are going to be dealing with unit 10 circuits and electric potential and current. I'm going to try to make this short and sweet so we get really four quick targets to deal with. The first two, as you guys can take a look, are dealing with um, electric potential. You'll see that there's this idea of low and high potential. We'll discuss that in our lesson on Monday. And number two, I know how to measure this um, change in electric potential. That is actually going to be the entire lab on um, Monday. So those two will come in handy there. And then the last two things I want to talk about is what current is. Um, we didn't really discuss this yet and I think this is helpful and we can start to apply some of our knowledge moving forward into our next actually unit lab as well. Um, so um, let's take a look at this idea of low potential and high potential. And the first place that I want to take you to is our capacitor. As we learned potential, um, let's go back to what potential is V, is equal to the change in E per charge. That means some object would have some amount of energy um, per charge at that one location. So th let me actually rephrase this. This is the amount of energy um, per charge. So when we were looking at our capacitors case, we would look and say, oh, this object has zero um, energy at this point because it would be a positively test charge and it would not move anywhere. However, um, so this would be zero volts and if we were to look at a charge here, this charge could maybe have 10 volts, meaning that if we were to let it go, um, it would have so much energy per charge. Um, so in this case, what we actually do is we measure this capacitor as having a delta V, which is a change in voltage or in electric potential. Um, change in electric potential. So um, this was the case that we studied last year. And remember, delta V is the amount of change in energy per charge. And that's just saying a charge will gain this much energy from moving it from here to here. Batteries work the exact same way. In a battery, we have low potential which is going to be referred to the negative side of the battery, and high potential, which is going to be referred to the um, positive side of the battery. By the way, you can measure this. This is also a delta V, and it follows the same idea saying there's a change in energy per charge. So that means if any charge were to go through this battery, let's say we have a charge going through, um, is it transverses this section and goes on over here, that object will gain some energy or again by doing going through delta V, we see that certain charge gain some energy. Um, so we can measure this with what we call a voltmeter. In a voltmeter, all that you need to do is you need to take the black wire and you need to put the black wire near the low potential. And you take the red wire and you put that near um, the high potential. And so you measure volt um, voltage with the voltmeter by this concept, um, which we, we always say we go across objects to measure the change in potential. And so we'll do this with our batteries. We'll also do this to take a look at how is energy changing around the circuit as it goes between two points. And so that is what a voltmeter will do. So this nails these two targets out of the way. Hold on, come back here. I know what low and high potential are, and I know how to measure um, change in electric potential in the circuit. Three and four are, again, pretty easy. We have this other idea of charge flow. Um, charge flow. Um, as we noticed, was measured with the compasses. Um, we actually call this idea current. Keep in mind, it is not the amount of charge, it is the amount, uh, the rate at which charge flows. So the way that this is actually calculated is how much Q will pass per time. So I want you to think about if you had a wire like this, and remember charges are everywhere, so they're just all floating about. And what we have to do is we need to take a sampling of this and count how much Q passes in how much time, and that will give us our I. So we have this idea of Q divided by time. Um, so if you just cut into the circuit and counted how many charges were to pass through here, that's how many coulombs of charge per time that it takes that will give us our current. So in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to actually hook up, let's say we have a circuit like this, 
we need to hook up, we need to actually break one of these wires and instead put an ammeter in here in its place. So now charges will pass through the ammeter and as the charges pass through the ammeter um, we can pull that data point out as being the I. Um, so just in a quick little recap, in circuits there are two types of measurements that we can take. Um, if we want to measure current we use an ammeter um, which is going to be this device right on over here and if we want to use measure voltage we will hook up this thing um, which is um, a voltmeter and of course we go high and low and we go across. Notice how things are going through here notice how things are going across this section on over here and we're taking a sample of it. One last bit that I just want to add real quick, I just remembered. Um, charge flow which is current which is delta Q over delta T. The units for this, let's just get this down. Units of course is going to be a coulomb per second. This by the way is an amp which um, refers back to the ammeter which is going to be basically an amp meter. Um, so this concludes it. Um, six minutes and 20 seconds, not too shabby. I did almost make it within that five minute mark. Again, if you have any questions, please ask um, on Monday when we hit class. Um, and uh, we, this should lead really well into our activity. Thanks for listening. And um, again, bring any questions on Monday.